Yo, what the fuck, Ben? <laughs> Everybody okay, pick cool. on Ben. Let's I go. I did it. I did it. I did it. Yay, I did it. I'm so proud of you, Gretchen. <laughs> All right, uh, I need to go here and do. Oh, wrong button. Here we go. I'm a professional. I'm gone, I like, swear. Thirty seconds. I left my drink in the other room. Be right back. All right. Well, where we last left off, the group returned from their, um little excursion mission for the magic shop owner known as Mel. They returned with his item that they sent him, uh, sent them to get. Um, and he was extremely thankful and gave you not only monetary rewards, but also uh, informed you that he was able to procure a way to the north um, he will be able to get you to Icewind Dale, where you can then procure a ship that will get you uh, through the Broken Sea to where the next piece of the Pearl is. Um, he... During the night um, afterwards, a few of you... Uh, noticed uh, a few characters in the in the tavern where you guys were just kind of celebrating the victory that you all had and these characters uh i believe it was flora kind of uh noticed a um insignia on them and noticed that these were people from the group that you just battled Lena, through the use of her familiar, was able to track these people as they fled the city upon noticing that they had, had been made. Um, they made a camp on the outside where Lena listened into their conversation, where they all decided to give up that uh, uh, life as they had returned to their camp post-battle and saw what the fuck happened. And decided this is no longer the life of for them. We're changing people's hearts out here. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, you know, just doing good out in the world, you know? Um, upon double-checking that campsite in the morning, you also questioned a few guards. Uh, one of which said that Mel um, was a very powerful person in this place not only just a powerful wizard but powerful politically as well and it is known throughout the guards that no one fucks with mel's shit um you then returned to mel's shop where he presented you with a not very large uh horseless carriage upon climbing inside you all realize the inside was much bigger and very Decadent, very beautiful, very royally decorated, with many with many different types of food and drink. So, uh, you all then got comfortable and began the trek northward. It wasn't long before you then realized uh, this trek would be an aerial trek. The night came, uh, Freddy and Mel both got a little messed up together. Um, and we'll join with everyone in the morning here as everyone's getting up. You can see both Freddy and Mel had a good night and are regretting it a little bit as they are slightly slower awakening than everyone else. Mel, Mel, I, I need some hair of the dog, please. Uh, uh, of course, yes. Um, you're not the only one. Um, I got something for this. And he goes over to the carafe of what's filled with what looks like water. Uh, but as soon as he pours it out, it's kind of this bluish liquid. Um, um, like a light blue. 
He pours out one cup and pours out another and hands you one. This should help before too long. Takes a drink. Um, it's it, it's kind of a uh, um, sweet, uh, almost fruity taste. Uh, as he gives you the D&D version of Gatorade. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, he takes a look out the window. And anyone else that does, you can see that the clouds are beneath you. And they're very thick. There's frost on the windows. And you realize a trip that could have taken a few months has taken but a single day. Well then, we are approaching Icewind Dale. It won't be long before we reached and uh, the town. Now then, as for the item that you are coming here for, this piece of pearl, yes? That's right. You all said it's uh, likely protected by a dragon like the other one was, correct? It seems like it, yeah. These dragons have these pieces, but I don't strange that it's just dragons that have these 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 pieces anybody else weirded out by that dragons uh yami would chime in and say well when i looked uh using the mirror and got my information about these pearls i did find out that this these are called the dragon pearls so the fact that dragons have them isn't exactly that surprising. I think I think my Yami voice is pretty good. I'm not. I'm a little pretty proud good. of that. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. That was. It's very close. Who <laughs> needs Corey? <laughs> yeah, he's Corey. I'm perfect as Yami. Let's. Sorry, Corey, buddy. Corey's gonna be proud. Corey's gonna be very proud. Corey's gonna watch this episode and just wipe a tear on that one. Um. <laughs> You might wonder why he has to be here at all if you do it so well. <gasps> because we love Corey. He's amazing. Of course. Of course um, I love Corey. <laughs> uh, but, all right, then. Well, Dollars to Donuts, you guys will be dealing with a white dragon. Um, I like you all. So, I have a bit of a gift. Um, and he, he goes to the, um, like the food table, um, reaches under it and you hear like the jingling of glass and he pulls out, uh, three glass vials, um, kind of, uh, just round, short round bottles. And you can see kind of this white swirling liquid inside of it. Um, these will help you deal with the cold of the area. I would suggest taking them either right before or hopefully not during, but this encounter with a dragon. I only have three of them, unfortunately. So you'll have to figure out amongst yourselves who would need them the most. Yeah, I think since uh, myself and, and Freddy tend to get right up in the uh, front lines, maybe the two of us should take one of them each. That sounds like a good idea, yeah. All right. He I also one... saw a closet back there with a bunch of, like, winter coats. Big, like, fur-lined winter coats. And I ah, just, I yes. Really Thank you for reminding me. Yes, I had those prepared for the trip. Everyone, um, this closet is open for everyone. There should be sizes to fit everyone. Let me know if anything needs changed or adjusted. Yeah, and when uh, we were in town not to a session or two ago... I did make a point to buy all that cold yeah, weather you, gear. You, you bought some I, cold weather gear, yeah. Like, and even like climbing picks and stuff like ropes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I do remember I've that. All the, good, all the goodies. Freddie also went out and did some shopping, and he's, you know, while you all have your standard kind of winter glows, yeah. you see Freddie like getting all gussied up in Canada Goose and, and just the, the fanciest uh, winter gear that you've ever seen. Yeah, Larry will also bought winter clothing when we were in town, but whatever, two sessions ago or whatever it was. Uh, 
Well, um, no, right. Um, them for we'll be nearing in the next uh, possibly hour or two to the to the town we're headed to. Um, so, if you all want to get bundled and ready, I will uh, make sure to adjust the heat in here so no one starts sweating because that's oh so uncomfortable. Um, so he starts bundling up as well. He pulls out a, a, a it's essentially a like a thick wool uh, or, or furred wizard's robe. Uh, it is white with silver trim. It is just fucking decked out. Um, you, you can all tell at this point. Mel likes to look good. Um, hmm. For others. And I then get it. He takes his hand and does this with his hair. And as he does, uh, um, just like the some of the tips of his hair go white. Um, Getting into the spirit. Ah, uh, yes. I like to adjust around my surroundings. It makes me more comfortable. It makes me feel like I'm fitting in a little better. Now then, if we all just then, the entire carriage rocks to the side. I need dexterity checks from everyone. Uh, Yami's good, nat 15. Uh, Docious, natural 19. Jakor, natural 9. Um, shit. Ariel got a 7. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Um, yeah, an eight. <laughs> uh, and then Mel, natural five. Okay, so for those that failed, take three points of bludgeoning damage. Um, as you all are rocked uh, to the side. Uh, yeah, you, you got a nine. Yeah. Uh, uh, DC was 12. So, Freddy, you're good. Docious is good. And Yami is good. Uh, everyone else okay. gets tossed to the side and smash into the nearest wall or cabinet or whatever is closest to you. Um, and is painfully um, hit the ground. Yeah. No good at all. Uh, can I can I make a, a perception or an investigation uh, to see what the hell is going yeah. on? Like, you, we did not land where we're supposed to, right? No, you are still in the air as far as you know. And he said it would be about an hour or so before yeah. you get to the place you need to land. I'm just going to look out the look out the window with a 12 and be like, where the hell are we? You look about and you can see you're no longer above the clouds. You're in them. You can see uh, you must have... Uh, after whatever hit you, hit you, you went down, um, as if Mel must have lost, uh, uh, focused for a few moments, and you lost some altitude. Oh. He stands. Oh, God. All right. Everyone, we need to figure out, and Lena, still looking out the window, you watch... In the last moment, you see the large, right-scaled head of a very large dragon pierce the clouds and crash into the carriage. Um, no. Okay, I need like dexterity saves. Dexterity saves. Okay, you're good. You're good. Everybody but Mel failed dexterity saves uh lena i'll give you advantage because you kind of saw it coming okay you. flora you you didn't even get up off the ground you just stayed down you were hanging on to a chair you're good second, second dexterity save for liriel so 23 liriel you're still standing uh, uh and just kind of riding with the with the smashes um, I got a dirty 20. Gotcha, gotcha. Just as this happens, the door uh, uh, like crashes open and is hanging on a single hinge. Uh, the head uh, or the claws of the dragon both 
pop into the doorway. And you can see one large glowing light blue eye look into the carriage. As I uh, manage to stay uh, on my feet and I can put both weapons in my hands instantly in the blink of an eye, can I stab it? I go ahead and roll an attack. Uh, you roll at disadvantage because you are currently losing altitude as this is happening. So you're trying, you're essentially zero gravity at the moment. And you're trying to leap forward. Lowest is an 18. 18 that'll hit. Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage, okay. You leap forward and stab for the eye. At the last moment, it does close its eye, but you're able to pierce a little bit, just like right under it. And a roar of pain as he then pushes the carriage out away from him. Uh, all of you start just like again just the zero gravity situation as the cart itself is just twisting and flowing through the air um mel mel? Is mel knocked out no but he does look uh, uh like he got dazed uh he lost concentration he looks uh, uh about everyone hang on and you can see him focusing and muttering the the same kind of words as he did when you guys first took off as he tries to get the spell to take hold once more. Um, let me... Can I give him my help action? If you would, please, because he did not roll good. Yeah, I give him the help action. <laughs> Seven's not going to do what he needs to do. Yeah. Okay, natural 16. Okay, okay. Sweet. Um, you sit there and, and, and you listen to him muttering the words and um, remembering what he uh, what he had to focus on before, you kind of join in with him and start focusing. Yami does the same and you all kind of mix your magic together as the carriage starts to slow its descent. However, um, I believe at this point, it, does it look like we're going to crash? Yes. Okay, so at this point, I'll be like, everyone get around me now! And then I will cast Tiny Hut. All right. You cast Tiny Hut uh, uh, at the floor of, of the, the, I keep saying cart, carriage. Um, everyone gets, well, it's more you get around Mel and everyone gets around there and you quickly, it's a casting time of one minute. So here's what we're going to do to see if you can get it up in time. Uh, you roll a d20 and I'm going to roll a d20. Um, if you roll higher than I do, you successfully get it off before, okay, 16. Uh, and could we possibly help by like pelting with arrows out the window or door towards the dragon? Uh, it's it, at this point, it's not the dragon. You guys are falling since he lost concentration on the spell, and he's trying to get constant. He's trying to cast the spell before you guys crash. Uh, the dragon like kicked you guys away towards the ground. You start casting the tiny hut. At the very last moment, you are able to get it. As soon as the protective field <laughs> covers all of you, you feel a crash. All of you are suddenly freezing cold. Um, I'm sorry, if we're in the hut, it's nice and tasty warm. Uh, the, once, once the carriage crashed, 
the heck goes away? It it, it bro and it's a dome, so the underneath like oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um you're you're it kept you all together rather than being spread out. Um but you are now in ice cold water. Um You were over the water? Yeah. Uh, or, or at some point you must have been, or the dragon kind of kicked you that direction. You're not sure. Um, you look around and you try to figure out where you are. Um, give me some perception checks. 19. 19, Lena, yep. You can yep. see the shoreline not too terribly far off. Uh, you and Flora can see that. Um, That's 18, so I assume I can as well. Yes. The other thing the three of you notice is the large winged creature headed your way. Um, uh, swim, swim, sw swim, and I'm like pointing at the direction. Nearby, the there is like a larger ice kind of island um that you could how far is it uh a lot closer than the land is, is it let's say 30 feet possibly um let me i just wanted to see I, how, how far away is the land uh it's from where you guys are it is uh it it, it is only about 30 feet away i could mold earth and just build a bridge we can run on instead of swimming and taking longer to get out of the ocean or whatever. Uh, with mold earth, it's got to be rock. This is all ice and water. Uh, okay. I do have dimension door, but I can only take one person with me. Uh, you take a look about, um, holding in your uh, next to you, floating in the water, is Yami. Like he 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 rolled a natural yep. one on his save. Uh, he's knocked out. Oh, so he's drowning. Uh, he's he's right next to Freddy, so Freddy can easily like flip him and get him above his his mouth above the water. Uh, the dragon is bearing down. I need athletics checks from everyone. However, I will remind Lena. You do have those boots of flying. Oh shit, that's right. Docius did not roll well. Can I activate my boots and just get out of the water? Yeah. Uh, w you doing that, you don't have to worry about an athletics. However, if you would like to help Docius. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 I'll do that. What's actually, your strength? Gonna... <laughs> Minus one. I, okay. Actually, what I was going to do is see if I could cast... Um... Oh, where is it? Floating disc. Yes. And yeah. I don't know how wide I can make it. Oh. I think it's ten foot. Okay, I'm going to cast floating disc. Okay. And it's one action, last ten minutes, just to get everyone on a platform. At, at the very least, Docious can... Uh, Flora, you, you're doing just fine. You're swimming towards the island just fine. Freddy, you okay, is okay. with a natural 20. I'll also allow Freddy. You can have Yami with you. Yeah, I'm definitely going to grab Yami to keep him from drowning. Yeah, with with um, a natural 20, you got him just fine. Now, I guess my question is, how far away is the land? Obviously, the, the ice little island thing that's floating there, Glacia, if you will, mm -hmm. is only 30 feet away. How far away is the land? Uh, perhaps a mile. Too far. All right. So I'm going, because I've got Yami, I'm going to go ahead and dimension door over to um, the glacier. Gotcha. Yeah. So you and Yami are on there. Um, Lena, you have Docious on... Lyriel had a 15 athletics. Lyriel, you, you're, you're cold. You're very cold. But you are making it. 
Um, Flora with no issue. Mel also takes off out of the water. I don't know how long this will work. Get to that island, get warm. And he looks towards the dragon and he you can see him focusing on a spell. And both he and the dragon disappear. Could I could I have like very studied that motion that he did? Mm -hmm. Make an arcana check. So yeah. You so cool. It's be between being as cold as you guys are, especially like the shock of cold. Yeah. Uh, it, it is hard to focus on anything at the moment. It's fascinating. I want to learn all that he knows. Uh, you guys reach the island. You look about. And that's when you notice you did get out of one danger. You seem to be in yet another. There seem to be a group of people and three large, what seem to be trolls. One man is standing toe to toe with these trolls. He's a very, very large humanoid figure. Uh, for those that would recognize, he is a Goliath. There is a archer who is pulling back their bow. You can see that they are running very, very low on arrows and they don't look very good. There is another figure holding a sword and holding his, his ribs. I will run up to one of the closest ones, but as a free action, I will toss my quiver of arrows at the archer. Okay, what's your movement speed? Uh, 30. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can, you can toss it that way. Uh, as soon as it clatters at their feet, they look down and at first look at you and point the arrow at you. And, uh, they, they look at you and give you just like a, oh God, who the fuck is this now kind of look. And they shake their head and they look towards one of the trolls. Um, at this moment, I'm going to have everyone... Roll initiative. Right. Oh my God, my rolls are terrible. I had good ones until now. You'll have to put me in, Tannis, but mine I got you. Is a fourteen. Eleven. Lyriel fourteen. Goliath has 15. Okay, are we missing? One of the ice trolls is first. Give me one moment here. <laughs> he will run forward and take a couple swipes at the Goliath. Uh, both fucking miss. Wow. Three and a five. Get wrecked. Uh, this Goliath with a large axe just kind of fends him off. Um, Freddy, your turn. This is like a five foot ledge here. Um, you can look up and you can see those trolls pretty easily. All right. Well, let's see.
Don't be too far away. We don't know. Perfect. So, I'll just run right up to here. I believe this is the right spot. Yep, that'll do. He's just out of range. And I'll say, oh, hello, fuckers. And I will thunder wave at third level. Oh, shit. 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 All right. Okay. Con saves. Uh, that's a definite what? no from one of them. Uh, oh, they had very good con. Hold on. Uh, well, still a 12. Fails. Uh, 17 succeeds. And a 9 fails. Again, they have very good con. And one succeeded. Uh, the one furthest away succeeds. And uh, he so... actually, I don't think he's affected because it's a 15 foot cube. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So it's yeah. just those two? Fuck it. They both failed one, that. It's um, just this one and this one. 19. 19. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, you blast those two. Um, they get pushed, right? 10 feet away. So right there. Right there. All right. I suppose I can do this. Uh, the Goliath. Uh, one starts falling over him. Actually, I, I'm going to use this. It's his turn next. I'm going to use this. Okay, uh, your bonus action? Ready? Oh, I'm just gonna forego my bonus action. I, I'll gotcha. pull out my, my, um... You know what, I'll pull out the javelin of lightning and just hold it and get it at the ready. Gotcha. At the big. At the end of your turn, you take 11 points of cold damage as you are soaking wet in the freezing cold. Uh, next up is the Goliath Warrior. Just as one of the trolls is shot like towards him, he ducks down and uses that momentum to take a strike. Move this for a second. Um... His first attack, uh, okay, is it 12 to hit? Uh, no. The attack unfortunately misses, uh, as the, oh shit, yeah. As the, uh, troll slams on the ground, however, his second attack does in fact hit. Sweet. Nine points of damage. Nice. Uh, to the one lower down. Uh, and he affects, he effectively makes this one pro. Um, <laughs> as you kind of did a tandem trip attack kind of thing. Um, so he's prone. The one on the bottom? Yeah. The one oh, little, little marker right there. Uh, Liriel, you are next. Okay, I'm going to go at the one that's prone, and I'm going to go all three of my attacks. Uh, and... Unload on this bitch. I will say, too, you can see a, a few. They have all three taken some damage as well. 24 for the for the hit definitely hits uh you do have advantage by the way with it being prone yep i roll with advantage and gotcha. nine points of damage on the first attack now i'm gonna roll the second okay Second attack. Uh, 
Uh, 22 to hit and another nine points of damage. And then I'm going to swing with my offhand. Definitely hits. He's looking pretty rough. Another 22 to hit, but only uh, six points of damage. Gotcha. Okay, every little bit counts, especially in this situation. You take, oh god, 11. I, it's 2d6 cold damage at the end of your turn. And both times now I've rolled okay. a 6 and a 5. Okay, all right. Yeah, that hurts. That, that oh, hurts a lot. All right. Damn. I can't roll a d20 worth shit, but I can roll d6s, goddammit. Um, next up, uh, uh, this ice troll above. It's going to take a couple of attacks. Uh, both are going to hit the Goliath. Uh, all together. Since I'm not on roll 20, just as a heads up, I'm at 53 hit points after the dragon uh, carriage gotcha. thing and that pole. I got you. All right, um, the Goliath is starting to look pretty rough. Uh, this one here is going to actually, how far are you guys? Yeah, he reaches down and like picks up a piece of ice and he is throwing it right here. I need deck saves uh, from everyone down here. Uh, oh, hold on. I think I have something for that. Okay. Yeah, can I use kettle words? Uh, that would be for an attack roll. Uh, he's just like throwing this and it's exploding. So they're just making uh, okay. saving throws. Uh, uh, however, attack, so cutting words. Yep. Yeah. However, everyone succeeds. Uh, so everyone takes half damage. So that is a total of, with the half damage, that's eight damage from everyone down there. And no other negative effects. Uh, he will then come down even here. With, that was a good roll. Even with half damage, I, I, I took that damage and then sidestepped and looked at that bro like, what? <laughs> uh, he will take his last attack at you, Freddy. And you could possibly, cutting words, this one. I took words the shit out of him. Uh, yeah, good, because that's an 18 to hit. All right. And... So that is what? A D... A D8. Uh, I believe it's a D8, yeah. So does a 15 hit? Just hits. Ooh, sorry, buddy. Uh, he comes down and he bites you. So that is... Oh, no. Just one. Okay. Uh, so it's seven points of piercing damage. With... Yeesh. Eleven points of cold damage. And I need a constitution saving throw, DC 15. Okay, you're good. Dirty 20. You're good. But you're... I'm looking awfully fucked up. Alright, Lena, you are up. Okay. Um, have I noticed the, 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 the sort of injuries that the party is sustaining because of the cold? Yes. Uh, so, you yourself are also quite freezing, so. And and I and I know this is to be bad because of how wet we are. Is that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cast prestidigitation on myself to pull the water and clean my clothes up. Okay. So that I can use that my action to do that. All right. Um, and then I will. Uh, I will jump. Use my. I think this is a bonus action. Let me look. 
I'm just gonna. I, I can fly. I'll just fly up uh, mm-hmm. thirty feet into the air. Actually, do I have cover from where I'm at right now? You're small enough. If you landed on the ground, yes. This this okay. little wall right here is five feet. Five feet. Got it. Okay. I will. I will just take cover from that. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, I guess forego <laughs> the rest. Unless you want to say prestigitation was a bonus. It's up to you. I don't mind. I will allow you to also prestidigitate one other person within your little vicinity here. Love that. Okay. I will do a prestidigitation on... Um, it's just Lyriel and Yami, right? And Docious. Oh, and Docious. Which one looks worse for wear? Yami. Uh, yeah, I'll press digitation on Yami. Clean his clothes up. Yeah, get that he's, water out of there. He's on the ground, unconscious. Oh, I might. Thing. Hold on. I do have a regular bonus action, mm-hmm. which is my healing light to offer some healing to Yami. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna just pump four. Um. So that's six. Yeah, you got a pool of d6s to use. Yeah. Seven. Wow. Six, one, six. Wow. 13 and, <laughs> okay, 16 points of healing. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, he is much better. Um, Ziraj the Hunter um, holds forth a oversized longbow, pulls back a very large arrow, and shoots at one of the ice trolls that are still standing uh, with a 21 to hit. Holy shit. Um, six, eight. Nice. Um, the arrow hits. Um, God dang it. The arrow hits. And then you see like an extra burst of uh, um, energy as it does a little extra damage. Uh, second shot at the one over by Freddy. Natural 15. That'll definitely hit. All right. Um... The archer, same thing. She's going to take a shot with her regular bow. Hits and definitely hits. Fuck yeah. Oh my god. The d6s for the second shot uh, for the guy was 2d6. I rolled 5 and a 6. And for her, for both, for it's a d6 per shot. And I rolled a 5 and a 6. Nice. Now those creatures are going to be... They're gonna roll like shit because you're giving us all the good ones. The the one on the ground is fucked up. Um, and she will actually continue going this way and kind of getting behind this ice boulder here. Uh, you can see she is not doing too good. Flora Bell. Okay, so um, the one on the bo- the three enemies we're facing, the one on the bottom right, that's the one that's on the ground, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can and I tell of the two, the two beyond him? Can I, at a glance, tell which one is most damaged? Or in what, uh, which definitely the damaged? archer here. Or, or do you mean the trolls? The the trolls. Yeah, this one heavily fucked up. So of the other two, can I tell which one oh, is uh, healthy? Oh, yeah, it's this one that's hurt okay, more, they're all, not by they're, much. They're all, they're all in range, and if this yeah. works, I'm going to be a mushroom cloud laying mother effer, mother effers. Let's go. I just want to make sure I know which one I'm tar- targeting. Okay. I'm here so for it. The one, the, one, the one in the upper right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast Guiding Bolt. Oh, fuck yeah. Because they're what, all of them within range, so... Okay, all right. Dice gods, let's do this. Casting spell. Is that the cast? 
but I hit the right thing. I may not have. I hit the. Yeah, you did, and you got a natural twenty. Nice. You Holy lying about shit! That. Mushroom cloud. Fifty-one <laughs> damage. Oh God! Holy shit! In the name of Aural. You all get watch. Me get me get, get, get bent. Get me bent. Uh, Florabelle walks forward, steps up on this this ice boulder here, puts her hands together and says a prayer to Oriel, and you all watch this this white light just coalesce into this faster and faster spinning, uh, almost looks like a bullet, and it just continues to just spin until it is going so fast you can't even see it. It shoots forth from Florabelle directly past this Goliath. Uh, he almost has to duck out of the way as it smashes into this chest of this ice troll. Uh, he is <laughs> fucked. Uh, that wasn't a guiding belt. That was a Kamehameha wave. It was a straight up Kamehameha wave. Like, god damn. 51 points of damage. It has nine hit points left. Nine. That is it. Holy shit, wide man. Eyes at you. Completely going, whoa. Yeah, at, at this moment, the three, yeah, the three smart. other, the three other people are like looking over like, who the fuck? Well, and the best part is whoever attacks it next has advantage. Yeah. Going Christmas tree. Yep. Yep, I have advantage. You have advantage for the next Any, person. Anyone attack. has advantage, yeah. Yep. Anyone uh, who attacks that target. The ice troll on the ground stands up. Uh, you know what? After seeing that, Florabelle, roll a d20 for me. Uh, just a straight d20. Yep. Um, okay, so how do I do that? Uh, I don't on know on the left, on the left there, that little toolbar that you have, the bottom one is a dice. Click that and then on click. Which, on on, on, on D20 or on D20 or D and D Beyond? If you look at the stream, I'm actually showing you right now. Left hand side, there's like the arrow, the paintbrush, magnifying glass, there's a dice. And you okay. scroll over to there to D20. Sorry, Sorry. So, I did something and I clicked. Okay, D20. And just click on that. Yep. There you go. So I rolled a four. Uh, he's gonna go ahead, stand up, and fuck off. Uh, Liriel and the Goliath both get attacks of opportunity. Ugh. My dice ran away. Okay. The Goliath hits. With a nine, Liriel does not. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, motherfucker. Okay, the Goliath does uh, just barely take it out. It starts to run away. As it stands up, the Goliath yells, Oh, no, you don't. And he just digs his axe into the head. Um, and that one is defeated. Uh... Freddy, you are next, as that one's turn is over. Right. Um, uh, because I'm so close to death, self-preservation mode, I'm going to disengage. Fair enough. Um, and then I'm going to move... 15... 20, 20. I'll move to here. Uh, maybe down to here. Yep, that'll do that. And then as a bonus action, I will healing word at second level. All right. While you're doing that, Goliath Warrior looks over uh, towards Floraville. Thank you for this chance. Uh, with advantage, he just barely hits. No, no, he, he definitely hits. 18 to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, he definitely. 
Uh, he digs his axe into the gut of this troll. And, and he doesn't pull it out. He rips it out. Liriel. Or, no, he's got a second attack. Fuck these things. I will run over to the, uh, the line that uh, uh, Freddy disengaged from. Yep. And uh, my first swing is a 22 to hit and 12 points of damage. You and the Ice Troll both charge, f or you and the Goliath both charge at this thing. Uh, he does 12 points of damage as well. Uh, that's his last attack. Start fucking late. Well, you got plenty of movement. You can actually flank with this Goliath here and get, get some advantage now. Your next two attacker at advantage. Alright, with advantage of 17. Uh, yes, that does hit. Okay, let me roll down. Uh, I'm also adding in a uh, trip attack, so he needs to make a uh, strength saving throw. Hold on one second, I'll the number, but 15. Uh, he does succeed. That's a natural 19. Alright, so 15 points of damage total on that God second hit. Damn, ouch! He's looking bad. Last hit is another 17 to hit with and, and 10 points to hit. And, okay. Uh, it's its turn. He'll take a bite at you. That is a 21 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot to do as well. Um, everybody take four points of cold damage that have, that has gone that I forgot to, uh, read it. So Florabelle and Freddy and Lyriel take four points of cold damage. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Um, and then for, for you, for the bite, ugh, nine points of piercing. And eight points of frost, so 17 damage total. So you're sitting at, I think, 32, Lirio? Yep, 32. Yep. I'll okay, that was, that, was, that was directed at Lirio? Yeah, yeah, Lirio. Okay. Uh, cool. Last strike here well, not towards cool, the Goliath. Three, eight. Uh, oh, God. The Goliath's hanging on. He's not looking great. Uh, Lena. Could I could I make a perception to see if uh, the dragon is gone, or if I have to if we have to also prepare for that fight? Uh, uh, with a quick look around, you do not see the dragon. Okay. Um, and you haven't heard it roaring at all. Of course, you're not exactly sure what Mel did either, so. Right. Okay. Um, I guess I will just firebolt, stick my head up <laughs> above the ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, just pew pew. Um, uh, oh, range spell attack, it says. Let me do that. Mm -hmm. 19. 19 definitely hits. Right, so then... 2d10. 2d10. Or 3? Yeah, 2. Yeah, it's 2. Um, here we go. 18 points of fire damage. Got Where exactly do you blast this thing? Um, I just want to put 
Uh, I want to put a small hole in the center of his skull. You kind of put your hand up, like, up on the ledge, focus, using, like, between your fingers as, like, a scope almost. And you all just watch this, this streak of red flame. Just a small, thin bullet of fire. Not even, like, impact. Just go directly through, right between the eyes. As this troll then falls to the ground. I'm like, did we get him? The Goliath kind of drops to a knee. I think so. Um, God. The half-orc man, standing also breathing heavily, uh, steps over to you, um, Freddy. I don't know who uh, you and your friends are, but we all owe you a great debt of thanks for helping us. Uh, I um, don't. Fire's uh, my help as I'm freezing and shaking. <laughs> yeah. oh, right. Um, he does uh, place a hand on you, Freddy, and you take five points of healing. That's, that, that's the last of his lay on hands, unfortunately, but. Um, uh, I can do a little bit. Uh, uh, who's who's hurt? Uh, I will look around and see like who's real. Um, I don't have much. Stuff. Yami's coming to consciousness. Uh, you could also use your press to digitation to to okay dry yeah, people can... off. And yeah. I tell everyone, listen, if we all want to gather around, I can make another tiny hut and we can all warm up. Um, yes, please. The elven woman here steps forward, and she's like bleeding bad from her chest or er, from her uh, ribs here. I would not be against that at all. Um, and just FYI, we're outside of combat now. Um, mm -hmm. I can do a lot of healing for almost everybody, up to six people within my range. So, okay. Um, the orc will pass up. He does not need it. Uh, Docius is looking okay. okay. So, one, two, three. Leave six people. Four, five. Six, yeah. Um, I mean, I can definitely so I'm, use it. I'm, I, a, I'm bloodied. I'm a half. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, below. I can, I can do mass healing word and, um, no, as soon as I... Go ahead and pop that off real quick. Hold on one second. Yep, I'm almost there. One second. Uh, clicking on the wrong things. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I'm on computer. Okay, spell. Worth. And for the record, DM, I want the external of the hut to be white to blend in. Blend in with, with uh, the... In case the dragon so, comes back. Mm -hmm. So that's for the six targets so within my range. Points of healing. Healing, not damage. Wrong button. Right, correct. <laughs> correct. It's healing. I'm healing people. That, that 14 hit points was all the Goliath had, had left. I almost killed him there. Uh, so... Yeah. Ariel and your grace, you help me deliver the mushroom cloud to our enemies. Please now give my friends boost. Please. You you say this as the dome covers everyone and the warmth of the magic from the dome um, radiates around you all almost like there's a, a space heater on every single surface just radiating towards you. Finally some luxury. Everyone just kind of mm. lets out that collective <sighs> um, they go about kind of bandaging the worst of their their damages. Um, the Goliath uh, looks over to you, Lyriel, and shakes your hand. You are quite handy with such a puny weapon. 
oh, I'm really good at taking things down with these things. I just twirl the rapiers and then they're instantly in the sheaths. You were most impressive on the field of battle. I'm going to uh, steady myself in the dome before we short rest and just burn my uh, uh, second win. Okay. So if somebody wouldn't mind rolling a 1d10. I got you. Uh, it's, uh, it's plus your fighter level, right? Yeah, so plus so, seven. Uh, it's 14 points of healing. Awesome. Um, everyone else is kind of, you know, taking a moment to breathe. Um, and just kind of be a little thankful that you're still alive. Can I use um, a couple of hit die uh, yep, on a short rest? Yep, kind of taking a quick short rest here. Um, the orc speaks, I am Ziraj. I am one of the hunters around here. These are my friends. We had a few more, but unfortunately the trolls saw to their end. We owe you much for coming for our aid. Though I do not know where you came from. Um, I just point up at the sky, um, and for just for you, I, I spent one hit dice and got uh, nine hit points back, so I'm back to full. Gotcha. I'm at 51 of 58. 40 of 48. My bonus. And I don't know what the rest of my party is doing. I'm on my freaking knees right now, thanking my goddess <laughs> for letting me do what I just did. You, like, holy cow, You girl. a good bitch. You an awesome bitch. You the best bitch. You're the best bitch. I will work to you till the end of time. Um, I look at the uh, the one we're talking to and just, um, do you know if if there's a, you know, a place where you've seen a white dragon before? Our friend... And the white dragon are gone, and we have to find it. I am aware of a dragon that frequents these these areas, Oronthar. You wouldn't know uh, where sorry, it's there. Sorry, Arath Arathator. That's just my own reading terribly. Arathator. He's quite dangerous. If he was around these parts. And you're still alive. That is impressive in of itself. If your friend was facing him, I fear facing him alone. I believe your friend may have perished. Could we possibly recover the flying cart? Uh, if you take a take a minute to go ahead and like fly out, see if you can find it. Go ahead and make an investigation. You kind of fly over to where you guys landed, and you're looking about the waters, and you don't quite see it. Um, however, kind of where you are, you do hear a, like, I, best way to put it is kind of like a warbling noise, like a whoosh, whoosh. Like, do I recognize that as, like, magic being held back? It's, or it's something that's some sort of, of magic kind of near you. Go ahead and make an Arcana check. Come on, ten. Man, your rolls tonight. I know. Ugh. You can roll damage rolls like a beast, but damn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you've warmed up from the dome and you're no longer soaking wet, it's still just... The cold is biting at you, and it's hard to focus on what's going on. The warbling speeds up. Faster. I, and faster. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rush back to shore. As you turn to start heading towards the hut once more, you hear a kish and a shattering noise. You watch as Mel falls from the sky. Um, can I catch him? Can I try can to grab him? You can certainly try. Uh, make a dexterity... Wait, who's test. falling from the sky? Mel. Mel. Oh, gosh. Uh, okay. What do you want me to make? Dexterity saving throw. Got it. 
19. 19. You catch him like underneath the arms before he hits the water and you're you're holding him. Um yeah. you're not the strongest person. Um I'm like dragging him back but trying to move. You're 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 essentially moving like 5 feet. Got it. Uh your your speed is like 5 feet and you are holding on to him. Um you hear him just uh, uh, Lena what what happened I tried to force him away uh, okay you can uh, see and... looking at like looking down at him his yeah. head is like split open oh and my he god is just his the entire left side of his face not like split where you could see the skull yeah. but like there is a gash, and there is blood caking his face. Can I give him my last two healing light uh, uh, dice? Yeah. I'm doing that. Seven points of healing. Okay. You watch as the wound does seal up. And you can see him kind of shake his head as he kind of is able to focus a bit now. Uh, he was at two hit points. Yeah. So, you're keeping him alive. Um. As you got, you're 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 flying towards uh, uh, the place. You're about you're about 35, 40 feet away from where you had to go to catch him. Okay. Um. The. Inside the dome, are you, are you keeping it so you can see on? You said you you could see on that through the outside, right, Freddy? Like they can't see in, but you can see out. That's correct. They cannot yep. see in, but we can see out. Yep. So you, so see, you see Lena uh, slowly carrying Mel over. Um, he his his white robe is now mostly red. Um, but you can see he's alive. He he and Lena, you can see their mouths moving and they are speaking. Um. As soon as he's in the hut, I do want to um, cast a healing word on him. Uh, they are within range. You can pop your head out and, and cast that if you wanted to. Um. Okay, nine more, or, or 11 more to him. Perfect. Okay, he's not... On death's door, um, Lena. Can you cast us? Can you? Can you? Can, can you? You have a fly spell or something, so we can get you over there. I. I not. I don't have enough power. I. Just then, you hear the loud, low, roar. Everyone in the dome, you see behind Lena, the dragon, appear in the air. Its eyes focus on Mel and Lena. I'm going to pop my head out again and cast Tasha's hideous laughter at it. Okay. Is it within 30 feet? Uh, no, it would be Damn, within 40 feet. Never mind. As soon as it's within 30 feet? <laughs> All right. She, they're about, th they are 30 feet from you, uh, Lena and Mel, and flying towards you as fast as they can. Lena, I want you to make an intelligence check. I'll give you advantage. Uh, that would be, uh, like a saving throw, or like... Uh, uh, J just intelligence. Okay. Dirty 20. Okay. With the speed of a dragon and the speed you are stuck going, you won't make it before the dragon reaches you. Okay, so it w one of us could make it, possibly. 
I'm gonna give uh Mel my boots. It would be tough to do in the middle of this, and then he would have to attune to them. However, I want you to make a either athletics or acrobatics, and I will give you advantage because you're using the boots to kind of boost this. You're try, trying to yeet Mel. Yeah, to, to 12. To, with advantage, with advantage. Yeah, I, I roll with advantage. A 12. Yeah. You're able to get him towards the ice. Though he does Can splash that, really? into the water. What do you say? Wait, so he he's... he's, he's... He's on the ice? He didn't reach the ice, but he's further away. The dragon might be able to get him still, but you are between him and the dragon. Okay. I'll turn to Mel and I'll say, get them out of here. And if I still have the boots, I'll just fly towards mm -hmm. the dragon as a distraction. Okay. I want you to roll. Let's make it an intimidation check at advantage. Twenty-three. This dragon is pissed. Yeah. Specifically at Mel. And you can see some wounds on it. Wherever they went to, they battled it out. He focuses instead on this small rabbit woman flying towards him. How dare something like this have the gall to face him? He opens his mouth, does a 27 hit. <laughs> Didn't think this through yet. <laughs> You take God damn five and six. I have not I've rolled two D six so many goddamn times tonight. And I'm pretty sure all but two of them have been five and six. Uh, uh so it's eleven six, eight. That's nineteen points of piercing damage. Nothing. And uh nine points of cold damage. As you are swallowed by this dragon. Can I order, Can I order a decomposition before, before I go in? Oh, hold on, you kind of echoed on that. Sorry. Can I order a decomposition before I go in? <laughs> yes. Okay. Is he within range for me to cast shittiest laughter now? At this moment, as he swallows Lena, yes. Then I will cast it. It's a wisdom save, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, he, he will use a legendary resistance. Because I rolled a seven. Damn it. You all watch as this thing swallows Lena. And then it kind of stops in the air and, and like flies back and up a bit. Um, looking out, uh, 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 the rest of you can see swim, barely treading the water. Mel is in the water, freezing cold. Um, actually, the Goliath. Um, who would have introduced himself as Jorun leaps into the water. He's resistant to cold, so makes the most sense for him to go. He's swimming for Mal. Lena, on the inside of this, you release your aura of decomposition and the dragon starts thrashing in the air. Um, it's almost... Uh, 
the muscles inside of it are tensing. It's almost crushing you. This was fun. And I'll just allow it to, I guess, overcome. Do you have... You have one other action. Do you wish to cast a spell or anything on the inside? Yes, I do. I'm going to cast uh, a Hunger of Hadar on the inside of this dragon. <laughs> should keep my friends safe. So, you watch as this dragon is thrashing, uh, staying in the air, at this point, maybe 50 feet from you all. A black tentacle <laughs> out of the chest another one out of the mouth the dragon thrashes around more uh, go ahead and roll your damage for the hunger of Hadar seven cold or what's the other one uh, uh, I believe it's poison poison yeah Acid. Seven. Acid. <laughs> you gave him acid reflux. <laughs> From the inside, though. Um, he begins flying away. I I've got to try something. Can I throw a javelin, my javelin of lightning, at him? You can roll your attack. Natural 20! <laughs> Sir! Sir! The javelin flies for about five feet before it shifts into a lightning form and takes flight. Landing directly where the wing meets the back. And it... Jesus! Fuck! It takes the hit, and where the the javelin then turns back into a javelin, sticking into the wing, you see it come flying back out of its back as a black tentacle shoots outwards. And another one out its back. The dragon falls, crashing into the water. Floating there. Unmoving. Jorun comes back, tugging Mel with him, climbing up onto the water. We've got to go get Lena. What are we doing? Mel uh, reaches to you, Lirio. Or, oh. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Reaches okay. to oh. you, Lirio. Uh, and you can feel magic. Um, and you feel yourself lighten. Okay, so you have I'm fly. fly. I'm gonna fly out to that to the dragon wherever Lena crashed. Mm. They are still floating there. Um, uh, I'm the dragon. The you, you watch as the black tentacles. As soon as about the time you reach there, the black tentacles fade away. All right, I'm gonna try and pry the mouth open and uh, find her. Give me an investigation check. Not my strong suit. But not bad. Did it roll That's through? Right. Did it yeah. show? Yeah. It takes a little bit of time, and it's tough because this thing, they're actively sinking. Um, but you get into the mouth, and... A few moments after the dragon fully submerges into the water, 
you all watch Liriel burst out of the surface carrying Lena. Is Lena conscious? No. Is she alive? At the moment, you are not sure. I'm going to, I've got you're, a You're, you're mid-air and it's I, cold. I just fumble for a healing potion at my belt and I just pour it down her throat as I'm flying back. You pour it down as you fly back. As you reach the ice uh, and set her down, her eyes remain closed. I uh, yell for uh, Flora. Get over here. She's not breathing. I'm coming. I'm coming. If you need me, I'm here. I've got a few things I can do if I need to. Flora, you reach Lena. And you look upon her. And you see no sign of life. None at all. So no heartbeat or anything like that? Nothing. I don't know that I have any kind of resurrection type stuff. I mean, I've got plenty of hardcore healing. Has it been... Do you have Revivify? Or Raise Dead? I do not have Revivify. Uh, let's see. Raise Dead. I don't think you're high enough level for Raise Dead. I don't think I am either. Nope. No, right there. Everything I have is for people who are alive. Oh, God. Tear wounds, healing wound, mass healing wound, prayer of healing, but nothing that will let me bring someone back is already gone. Lyriel just stinks into the snow. I'm sinking into the snow right next to her because after everything we just did at the behest of the gods and the goddess says that we should be in this position now. So powerful five seconds ago and powerless now. I want to do something that might be kind of stupid. All right. So the javelin returns to me, yes? No, it does not. But Lyriel could have grabbed it. Yeah. So I, mean, no, I, I thought the jav one, the, one of the things of the javelin of lightning is that it does have that returning feature. No. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would have grabbed it and when I grabbed uh, yeah. Lightning. Well, I mean, if you have it, then I'm going to try and, like, um, give, try and use, like, a little electric shock, like, to the chest area. Try and shock them back? Yes. You place the javelin Where? to the chest. There is a little bit of lightning. And you can feel the shock yourself. And the body twitches. But otherwise does not move. Mel stands, shivering in cold, still crusted in blood, but no longer actively bleeding. I would not be alive right now if not for Lena. You little one gave your life for me. And that is not something I will ever forget. He casts 
a spell upon her. And you watch kind of this magical sheen across her body. The ravages of time will not claim you. The orc stands. None of us here, none of my friends would be alive if not for all of you as well. And so I will inform you that the dragon your friend destroyed was not a Rathar. It was one of his children. I can take you to its lair. At that, both the Goliath and the archer, the elf, look at him like, what? I alone will take you. And you can seek your revenge. Lariel stands, and she is like the smolder in her uh, amber eyes, and there's just this look of just pure hatred and anger lead us mel i i'll need a little bit of time but if you can give me a few i can yeah, I is there any kind of town along the way that may be able to revive her not in these parts i am sorry it is beyond us Mel says, um, I can get those who are not going to the dragon to the nearest town. Have I have a little rest. In the meantime, I will recover and repair the carriage. Maybe when we return, maybe I can find a way to bring her back. And I don't, I don't know if it's for me or for Lyriel, because I'm next to her, and I've just put my arm around her because I, I'm, I'm having a crisis of faith right now, because I just dropped bombs, and yet I can't save a friend. So, I just hope that my proximity to my other companions, while I'm struggling with this, you Would know, you helps so? them. As you do so, when you look kind of past their shoulder, you see standing on this little island, way over here, the form of Oriel. Almost like a shifting shape in the snow. Present and watching. You see her look down, and you see a, a shape also, it's like, it's like something that you're barely seeing through a blizzard. A small figure that comes up to its knees, uh, to Oriel's knees, with long ears. Lena, you have been granted the right of last words. I'll sort of look to my friends and I'll say, whatever it is that you guys end up doing, whether it's continuing this quest or doing something more extravagant, just make it count. Just make it count. All of you clearly hear this in your minds. As the two forms blow away in the wind.
that would probably make Lyriel angrier. Like, you know, that some entity granted Lena the ability to speak with us one last time, but didn't restore her to us. So Lyriel's probably even madder and kind of like shrugs off uh, Flora's like hug and it's like standing, staring off towards the mainland. The rest of the party gathers tightly into the hut. As Mal takes the, what time he can to rest and recover what spell slots he can. And the rest of you prepare for revenge. And that's where we'll end this episode. Oh my god. Oh wow, that was that was Ooh, Oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> For those Tyler? watching Tennis and JD, I hate you both. <laughs> Love you guys. For those watching, thank you. And we'll see you again next week. Not supposed to make me cry in real life now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs>